601, the meeting of the Wayland Select Board to order. First order of business minutes from the meeting of September 12th. Any comments? No comments. None for me. None. I move that we approve the meeting minutes from September 12th. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Bedroom payroll warrants. Any questions, comments? None, None for me. None. Public comments. Do we have any members of the public? I had a member of the public ask me something. And at the yeah. time I thought I knew the answer, but it seems I didn't. We put did we not put in two stop signs where Christian Lane turns into Chestnut Plain and then North Street? Didn't we not have two yield signs there that turned into two stop signs? Yes. Yeah. Right. And one of them was if you were on Christian Lane and you were gonna turn right on North Street. There was no, no, no. No, no they were all coming up from North it, Street. Right. So it was at the cemetery. Yeah, kind of when you're kind of right. up that hill, merging with Chestnut Plain Road. Right. And or if you're gonna go south uh, east on Christian Lane, turning left and going up to the top of the little rise. No, that stop. one no, that one still has the that does not stop sign. I that's a stop sign. Wow. Only sure if, if you're on North sense. Street. You do. Anyway, I thought I don't understand why there's not one if you're on Christian Lane and you go on that little thing that goes down the hill. Yeah. You don't have a stop sign. No, there's no, nothing. North Street has the right of way. And I thought there was a yield sign there before. Mm. Anyway, someone asked me, why don't we have a stop sign? That. So I want to put that into the atmosphere and maybe next time um, we have. Yeah, I, uh, I almost had an accident for that intersection about two months ago. Oh, so I, you I, know it really. I, I, I was coming. Okay. North on North Street, and it was a FedEx truck that just went right around the corner, never even looked to see okay. that I was there. Could we put that on, like, next time you see Keith to ask about that particular place? Because I, for some reason, I thought there was a yield sign there, and that was one place where we put in a stop sign. No, but dude, then this that, person that, mentioned it. That, that, was, that was at the top of the little, that little rise. That, go, go, that one, yeah. That, going on, that had been a yield right. sign, is now a stop sign. Go heading right, so from, people, from on little... people on Christian Lane do not have to stop, no. right? No. Yeah, they do not. Right. Okay. Um, yes, you're right. Right. right, so if you're coming down where that arrow is, yeah, um, there that, it could be. So, yeah, I'm also there, 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 yeah. <laughs> there was one, there was one, and it got a secret, uh, uh, it got knocked over or something because that some sign at the end of Swamp Road in North Street, it's like. It, it, it's almost like sport. It gets hit so often, you know. They, yeah, they well, just I, put some it, concrete it, it barriers. Got knocked down. Well, there were concrete barriers. <laughs> the tractor trailer tried to take a right there. Uh, and yeah. and took out the sign and the barrier. And the right. Other. So I didn't know if it happened because the sign was missing, and then and they're already on it trying to replace it, or if it's a place where we actually did, have never had one. And if not, why the heck not? And I do not actually remember that the transfer station. I don't remember the name of the person who stopped me and asked me about that. Okay. Okay. We'll find out. Any other no. comments from public on some things that are not on the agenda? Everyone's here for agenda items. Okay. Uh, public hearing to consider a request for a transfer of the annual inholder. Alcoholic beverage license from Kevin Clock to Stephen Clock Incorporated to be exercised on the premises at 193 Chestnut Plain Road, commonly um, known as the Whiteley Inn. Want me to, want me to read the notice? Yeah. 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 Town of Whiteley notice of public hearing, transfer of liquor license. The select board of the town of Whiteley will hold a public hearing on Tuesday, September uh, 26, 2023 at 6 p.m. at the Whitley Town Office at Sports Annual and Whitley Mass and via Zoom meeting ID 847-8846-9391, passcode 866, shouldn't have offered to read this, 9966, or join me by telephone 1-888-788-0099, U.S. toll free, 1-877-853-5427, U.S. toll free to consider a request to transfer the annual inholder alcoholic beverages license from Kevin Clock to Stephen Clock Incorporated to be exercised on the premises at 193 Chestnut Plain Road, Waitley, Mass. And that ran in degree of a quarter on uh, September 15th. Okay. Uh, I will move to open the public hearing. Second. Second. In favor? Aye. 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 
Good, good evening. Uh, my name is Benjamin Coyle. I'm an attorney with the law firm of Bacon Wilson. I'm here to present the uh, the application for the transfer of the liquor license on behalf of the applicant. Uh, this is really kind of a housekeeping measure. The only thing that's really happening is changing uh, the ownership of the liquor license that was previously held by one of the family members individually into uh, the corporation that operates at the Waitley Inn. Operations are going to remain the same. Um, and this is really something that we wanted to do in order to help facilitate the business just moving forward and put it into the name of the LLC. Uh, the owners of, I'm sorry, put it into the name of the, uh, the corporation. The owners of the corporation are Stephen Clock and his wife, Lisa. Um, Stephen is the president, treasurer, and director. Lisa is the secretary. I believe that all of the uh, documentation has been provided to the board um, relative to this transfer request. Um, it is for nominal consideration as it, as it is between family members. The asset purchase agreement shows a nominal consideration of a dollar um, that is being transferred for. And I can answer any questions that the the board may have relative to the application. If not, I don't. Yeah, I don't have any. Uh, there paperwork is in order. Yeah, we we've got no questions on it. Okay. So. Um, I would uh, make a motion that we, oh, we have to close the public oh, hearing. Close the board, no, sorry. I move that we close the public hearing. Second. In favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Now, I, I move that we, uh, uh, what's the right word, approve the request to transfer the annual in holder alcohol beverage license from Stephen, uh, Kevin Clock to Stephen on the pink. Second. Any comment, questions, discussion? No. no. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Awesome. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Uh, COVID-19 rapid tests continue to be available as the COVID virus comes back. Uh, available town offices, library, and police station. Old business. We have another draft of the RFP for the sale and restoration of center at school. Yep. Where does that stand? So um, I sent out the draft to the board um, of the RFP document. Um, outstanding issues, I guess, that I wanted to touch on tonight. Um, one is um, town council uh, provided a land uh, a draft land development agreement. So we might want to discuss whether to include that or not. Um, good question as to whether to um see the right of first refusal on the property would be the second item and the third item would be um town council recommending that um uh, issues surrounding uh the milk bottle which is owned by the historical society be resolved at the time of the, the closing of the sale which would um which is suggested that there um be an easement from the whoever the the, the winning proposer is um, in favor of the Whitley Historical Society, um, you, you know, to have access and, and rights to uh, maintain and, and, and repair and whatever else needs to happen to keep the milk yeah. in that location mm -hmm. in good shape. Um, so I don't know how we, which ones we want to talk about first. And then the issue about the easement would be whether the whether that's something that the town would want to go ahead and um, get the documents in order for. Yeah, do we need to have the documents in order for the of the you know to take care of the easement, which I think means a survey, right? Um, and then um, I re there was some draft verbiage that came to us in an email, I think originating from the historical society, um, kind of outlining the things you said, like access for repair, access for storage, um, yeah, and uh, and it was very, I, it all seemed very reasonable. Yeah. Um, what they were proposing, uh, the easement to allow. Um, does that have to be done before we can send out the RFP? Or is that just something where we can send out the RFP saying that there will be an easement for the milk bottle and be kind of doing that work in parallel? Is that... So, so the laws around the laws that 
that the RFP has to comply with them. Are there any restrictions that we're going to that the town is going to impose on the on future property owners needs property owners need to be included in the RFP? Oh, yeah. now with that said, um, you know, do the exact boundaries <clears throat> of the easement need to be set? I I wouldn't think so. Um, oh, okay. So we could do the survey after the fact, but include the details what the easement is for. I, I think that's a possibility. We could do it concurrently with you know with the advertisement of the RFP. Uh, one threshold question is uh, in which the survey will show us is 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 the is the milk bottle actually on the center school property or is it within the public right of way mm -hmm. on Chestnut Lane Road? Um, that's that's a sort of a, a threshold issue that that a survey would give us the answer mm -hmm. for. So really, it's it's two parts, right? It's it's the survey, it's the property survey, and then it would be preparing the easement plan, mm -hmm. which would which would show the actual location of the easement and give us a meets and bounds description that's mm -hmm. required to record it. Can the RFP simply say something along the lines of the property may be subject to an easement for the milk bottle? Um, I because that's a restriction and it has yeah. to be in there, but. How much of the details have to be there? I guess. So I think we could. I, I think it. I mean, typically we include the the draft document that we're going to ask somebody to mm -hmm. to enter into, subject to negotiations, mm -hmm. obviously. But I mean, we could put in. I, I mean, the uh, the way the historical sites provided the draft detail things about what the, what what they're seeking. The issue would just be the exact. Location within the property as the bounds of the easement. I mean, that's really what we're going to get at when we so, assuming, it is, so, assuming it is, and they, assuming we, it is on the property. Right, right. So I don't know that it, I would want to know what the timing of when we can get a survey and easement plan done. Yeah. You know, and, and, and sort of line that right. out. I don't think we would want to do it after. Um, right. We want to be doing that. Process. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We'd want to do it concurrently while people are looking at the RFP. Yeah. Then, but but I, I don't think it's necessary to do it before we send out the RFP. I think we would just need a draft document. Yeah, the location. Shit, right. you know, that, I don't think that's a big deal. So, okay. um, hmm. I will say that when there was an easement plan done for the survey, and easement plan done for uh, the pump house adjacent to the center mm -hmm. cemetery, and that was thirty one hundred dollars. That was back in 2019. Yeah. I haven't gotten to date. And how, how long did it take for that um, to happen? They already had, we already had first year design group under contract to do the engineering for the, okay. for the, for the pump house. So uh, I think it took about maybe three weeks, maybe. Oh, okay. weeks. But we and sort of already had them in the queue when they just yeah, ran. Right. Uh, so uh, uh, if it's really fast, it's a matter of, Say a month, but it could be yeah. double that. How long? And the RFP is going to be out for about how long? Um, typically, they're out for about thirty days or four more. Um, okay, so they're kind of similar time frames if it's fast. But um, we could, we could, we don't have the the boundaries. Yeah. Looks like Neil has a question. Yeah, I was going to get to Sorry. Neil. Uh, yes, Neil. Uh, I'm muted, so you'll have to unmute me. No, we can, no, we can hear you. We can hear you. You can hear me. Okay. Uh, so the the draft document that you have came from the Historical Commission. Uh, it's mm -hmm. about historical preservation, with some suggestions about uh, the needs for the milk bottle. I have sent to Brian a full statement of the request from the Historical Society about the milk bottle. But it is pretty clear to me that with 120 feet width to the right of way on Chestnut Plain Road, if that continues down to the center school, then there's very little front yard to the center school that is not in the right of way. The chain link fence uh, clearly is on the town right of way. And so I think you might have a problem uh, in sort of truth in advertising, advertising that there is a property uh, on which you are accepting bids if you haven't demarcated the boundaries of the property 
that you're offering. Uh, because uh, Keith Bardwell responded that he was pretty confident that the chain link fence that borders the streets uh, around the uh, center school uh, intrudes on the right of way. And so what are people getting? Uh, other than the building, for sure, and the backyard, for sure, uh, how much of the front yard but are they getting? True any, that's true for any house you buy. Anybody buying any property has that. Uh, there's a, a, a town's right of way on the one side of the road or the other. So uh, I don't think yes, that, that's I, uh, advertising. I, 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 under, I understand, but my point is that if you look at that property, you see a chain link fence that appears to define the front yard that belongs to the property. And uh, I don't know what people imagine they're getting. And I don't know how the right of way extends past the, um, the extension of Chestnut Plain Road and the curve that connects Chestnut Plain Road to Christian Lane. Uh, and I don't know how wide is the right of way on uh, Christian Lane. Uh, does the deed accurately reflect town right of ways? Uh, I, I don't know what you're offering. And I don't know if that matters, depending on what people want to do with the property. Uh, but it seems to me that not only for where is the milk bottle, but where is the boundary of the property? Um, what are you going to put out there? Is it the well, is, your suggestion, is your suggestion that we get the survey done prior to sending out the RFP so that that is clear or that we clarify on the deed? Well, if, if the deed is clear, someone could go put out stakes. Uh, Keith could put the stakes up that says, here's the boundary. Uh, and you would know whether the milk bottle is within the property you're offering or outside the property that you're offering. Uh, and so complicating it with something about the milk bottle uh, might be unnecessary if it remains in the town right away, but it is important to complicate it if it is within the boundary of the property that you're offering. So I don't know how you answer that without either being sure that the deed is correct and you just put up stakes and so you know, or if you're not sure that the deed accurately reflects the boundaries. Uh, I, I don't know when the curve was put in that connects Chestnut Plain Road to Christian Lane. And so uh, what right of way goes with the curve? I I don't know. Keith seemed not to know. Uh, and so there, there are some questions uh, there that I think you you might want to address or until you get a, a serious nibble of interest in the property, uh, maybe it's uh, premature to spend the money to get it surveyed. But I, I think that will be a serious concern that you'll have to take up. Well, I think we'll, we'll need to get it surveyed at some point regardless. And depending on the going to enter into an agreement to, to use it for some purpose, it will have to be surveyed to know exactly what their what their rights are. Yeah. Um and I yeah, I, 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 I would say that the assessor's maps are, but that's the assessor's map. Like the, like that. Yeah, the the assessor's map is crazy. It shows the extension of the property it goes out into the middle of the road. Uh, no, so, actually, it doesn't. So the assessor's know. map is not correct. Oh, um, over on Christian Lane, um, yeah, it, it does kind of get bumped down. Into, uh, <laughs> but but think, the town's right away, I don't know. I mean, that, that's what I'm asking. Are the assessor's maps accurate with regard to the town's no. No. right away? And Absolutely my, not. Is no. No. Uh, but that's still what they use to assess the merits. Yeah. But they never had to assess the um, center school because it was town property. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. But I, I think this isn't getting into a contract for sale of land at this point. It's 
simply an RFP. We're we're looking for potential uses. And if someone comes in with an idea, first of all, we can say that I think we can authorize a survey to be done that is going on and may well be completed or could be completed by the time the response to the RFP even come in. And this isn't the draft document, but right. if it turns out it's all on town uh, right away, yeah. then we reevaluate whether the easement is necessary. But right. we've got to put something in there about it. Because if I went over there and looked at it, I'd think that milk bottle is mine. I get to decorate it like a Christmas tree and I can store my crap in it mm -hmm. and, and all that stuff. So I, I think um, that should be in there. And right. whether it's going to be technically called an easement or, uh, hey, just for your information, this is on town. Right. This part is actually town on land and uh, people will be accessing this. And no, you can't light it up like a Christmas tree every year. Um, that stuff, I think, has to be in because that's a restriction. So that uh, whether it ends up being called an easement or not, I think that should be mentioned. Your point about uh, town right of way is well taken, though, and thank you for pointing it out. Any other comments, Donna? Yeah, um, two things. Um, <clears throat> the deed, the language in the deed, dates to 1909, and it's, I'm, I don't know, it's, I think Brian said you all have the documents. It's Exhibit A in the draft uh, preservation restriction document. Um, it's one of those murky, you know, distance from the highways, <laughs> the two highways. So, you know, who knows, but we have that. Um, the other thing just um, that you may be interested in that Brian certainly knows is that while the Massachusetts Historical Commission, the state agency was taking their sweet time looking at our draft document, um, one of the things they were waffling, one of the questions they asked, I should say, which is fair, is whether the town had ever granted to the Historical Society an easement. Um, and uh, when I went back to the towns, I went through all the select board minutes in 1995 that were relevant and found um, ample evidence of the town's gracious <laughs> welcoming of the uh, of the yeah. installation, but there was never a formal agreement between yeah. the town and um, and the historical society. And I think Brian and I think everyone who was consulted thought, you know, that's now, you know, water under the dam or over the dam, whatever the expression is, it's time to move on to the new stage. Any other comments? From public. So, what do we want to do? Um, it sure seems like we got to tell them what's the story with the milk bottle, um, even if we don't know the whole yeah. story yet. That and uh, it seems prudent to put in the draft language um, about uh, access and responsibility. Um, I think most of the the language was about what access the historical site we have and then if the bot milk bottle were to be removed the historical society has the um, responsibility to i guess basically take out that pediment and return it to grass right that's what i'm remembering from that um and so that all seems like that's not that's reasonable to put in to the rmp as information right um that's yes, I, I, if I may, Joyce, I added a few things in my note to Brian that, oh, yeah. su okay. that suggested... I, I mean, you may not have put everything in, in words. But right, yes, but, it's but it easy. suggested that there would be uh, limitation, uh, so they would be forbidden to attach anything to the milk bottle. Mm -hmm. I, 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 yeah. And that uh, the the, they, were for, they were forbidden to use the image of the milk bottle in any way for promotional yeah, I'm purposes. I'm just trying to get to the RFP, okay? Right, right. I'm right. not trying to, to make a historical record of, of all of the, the parts. Right. I'm just trying to get to the RFP. I, I think for the RFP, we just need to put in it yeah. a put in reference to the milk bottle that it will be 
Yeah. Yeah. And, and needs to be protected. We, there's no reason why we can't include the language that was in that note to Brian that yeah. got forwarded all of us. Yep. No reason to exclude that. Um, and so yeah. as far as that issue goes, I think it should be included in whatever way is legally best for us, which seems like saying uh, an easement would be a good thing. Are you okay authorizing a, a survey of the property? And then the second yeah. step would be that if there needs to be an easement plan done, then that would be a, an additional decision plan, assuming that it's right. Right. on right. But we don't, property. We, we don't don't can't know that decide that until we have the survey. Right. Yeah, my question for us is, are we in any rush to get this RFP out? Is there any reason yeah, not to get the survey done first, or at least to inquire about guidance? Um, speaking yeah. not, if I may, I not so much from the historical commission, but just thinking about how real estate works. It certainly would be better to have it on the market while the leaves are in on still on the trees, and you know, rather than in the dead of winter. Um, so I think that's one answer to your question. Thank just, you. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think people are more likely to come and walk through and they don't have to walk through snow to right. to do it. Well, and the building now has no electricity. So the longer the days are, the more they'll be able to see. So, and the which, which might be to our advantage or not. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So yes on the yes yes on survey, right? Yeah, yes, okay. yes on survey. Yes on survey. Uh, and I think that, you know, given real estate, I think we'd like to get the RFP out. Yeah, that's, as soon that's as possible. Uh, we, we, I don't, I wouldn't, oh, I don't think, think we have to wait for the survey. Yeah, that's why that's my the original question. Do we have to wait for the survey? It sounds like the answer is no, as long as we put in some language, some language about what the restrictions are going to be on the milk bar. And with language that the milk bottle may not even be on the property. Right. It'll, it'll right. Be, uh, yeah. That that's it'll that. be a separate right. possession. Okay. You don't have decision okay. If the milk bottle is is well, that is enough? Right. Is that enough instruction well, to if that yeah to revise the RFP for this? So maybe we can vote on it in a couple of weeks. Yeah. Okay. Great. Oh, that's that's good for the easement survey question. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. There's two more. Okay. Yeah. Right. So well, let's do the land development agreement. Yeah. Um, that was suggested by the town council. Um, as I uh, wrote into the board, I think it's a little bit onerous for the scale of the project that we have, and it's it's duplicative of a lot of other provisions and the, the preservation restriction. Um, I mean, it, it might be you would you would want the land development agreement if you wanted the, the winning proposer to undertake a specific project and a specific use of the property for two years, okay. um, where they commit to doing, well, let's just say, they commit, they, they put a proposal in for a bakery and you want it to be a bakery for the next, whatever it is, 12 years, 25 years, then you would have a land development agreement that says, you're gonna fix up this, you're gonna fix up the center school and you're gonna have a bakery. Um, the preservation restriction will will cover the you know the building. It will, it will protect the integrity of the building. Um, it protects against waste in the building. It protects against uh, demolition by neglect, and it, it requires the building to be kept in in good condition. So uh, those that will be the only reason I think you would want to use the the LDA. Mm -hmm. um, but it's it, it doesn't sound necessary. Most yeah, it doesn't sound to right advantage either. We, you know, the, the uses are, as indicated, are governed by the zoning bylaws. So that severely restrict what the uses can be anyway. Okay. It, yeah, right, because it's, yes. So I, my first bit, I don't think that an LDA is, is really necessary here. I would yeah. agree. Yeah. yeah. I think we're 
And the third thing? No, vote three. The third thing was, was the issue about a right of, right of first refusal yeah. that would give the town the option to buy the property at agreed upon at the agreed upon terms that the winning proposal would sell to another buyer. Yeah. Um, it's, it's essentially you know, it's a one shot deal to get the property back. Uh, mm -hmm. The town kept, for, for example, the town kept the uh, right of first refusal when it transferred the police. Uh, East Wayne School, the Blue School, yeah. to Frontier. Mm -hmm. At that point, the town kept the right of first refusal, which the town, uh, the select board decided not to exercise. Yeah. Um, at that point, because yeah. there wasn't much interest in yeah. the building. At, at first, my thoughts on this were like, why not? And then the, the reasons why not came up. And but I, I guess the the, the other question I'm going to ask is like, what what do we really get out of that? So I'm, I'm, I could go either way on this, but I sort of feel like um, the other protections we have are stronger. Like what, I have never in 12 years on this board had a right of first refusal come up where we had the money to go buy something. Now that was worth anything, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Even if it's just a little, like an agricultural preservation thing, we've never had the money to buy anything where we have the right of first refusal. So the chances of us, you know, having the money to buy that in property, assuming it's improved and so on, and, and wanting to buy the property are pretty slim. Um, so I, you know, I don't think I, it's worth the extra effort for something that's very unlikely to cost to. How, to how ever, much extra effort or, or what, uh, what's, what's the downside? Putting yeah. it in. The downside is more perhaps psychological, but um, buyers might not want to make a bid on something if they know that all oh, the town has right of first refusal. They could just take this right out from under me. But, and, but that so, that would be for the subsequent sale. Yeah, not, yeah, not, 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 not right. So, so the person who's buying it is is in, uh, and if, if they ever want to sell it at the sales time, they're at a, a disadvantage. And as I know, it's not necessarily a big disadvantage given our record on right of first refusals, which, but, is, which is why I could kind of go either. But way. I also think the advantage is if, if there's a subsequent sale proposed and it looks like it's going to be something that we really don't want to go in there but can't stop, that we might be able to find the money to exercise the right of refusal. Mm -hmm. Can we that, do some if? scenarios like what kinds of things might we not want to go in there that the zoning bylaws and the usage bylaws wouldn't protect us we won't know from. until it's proposed e yeah, yeah but like that, that's, the, that's the problem manufacturing can't, can't go in there can't go in there can't go in there um pachinko parlors can't go okay gambling yeah, yeah. um the problem is people can be very creative when it comes to getting around. This is zone, true, and zoning. we've seen that in our town. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, yeah. That, you know, a, a, as has happened elsewhere in the town, that if it's a residential property, someone can put in something that becomes a related business that yeah. to the residential which may or may not be. Yeah. So the advantage the of the having the historic preservation that works. Right. So the, the historic preservation. Yeah. yeah. What protections do we have in place that the right of first refusal is simply duplicating, or does it give us an additional protection that we don't have in other arenas? I would worry about some uh, auxiliary structure. Because the historic preservation applies to the existing building, but if again there's a a business associated with the residential, you know, there's some apartments, but someone wants to have a business with some auxiliary building. Now there may be zoning planning issues, but those don't always stop things going up. But could any of our attendees from the planning and zoning? Um, uh, Boards weigh in. Judy, right? I shouldn't have unmuted, I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't think there are a lot of protections that the pres preservation restriction gives it 
it requires that the building be maintained. I think the zoning actually precludes too much else on the lot because there are a lot of coverage requirements. Um, as a personal matter, I don't really see a cost to having the right of first refusal. It assumes if, if the town is going to bid, I believe there has to be an appraisal of the value because the town can't buy something that's not appraised. Mm -hmm. right. And and at that point, um, if we decide not to have it, it can go on the market at whatever the person wants, but, but at least you have the market appraisal. Mm -hmm. There would not be any way probably that we could as a town sneak a purchase in because we would be required to have an appraisal. Is I think Ryan, isn't that right? Yeah. It, it, yes. And one thing that occurred to me is obviously if there's a public purpose to the acquisition, the municipalities all have the right of eminent domain. If there's a public purpose, so obviously that requires more than you know, mm -hmm. just a decision by the select court. What does that mean? If there's a public purpose, um, it, so if the town, if the town, if the town is going to exercise its Authority to take private property. There needs to be a public purpose oh. for the municipality to exercise that authority. Okay. Yeah, but then I agree with you. I don't. I don't see the downside. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah I kind of I, don't either. Mm -hmm. I think that potential developers are more are cleverer than we are when it comes to getting around the rules, than are projecting how they might get around the rules. Yeah. Um, so I'd rather put this in as a protection and if it uh follows up a potential sale down the line maybe that wasn't a sale we want maybe that wasn't a sale we want right okay so I've, okay i i i, I, I would i would put yeah. it the right yeah okay right I, first repeat. I, yeah i don't have any problem with that thank you I for know. your input judy thank you judy you're welcome <laughs> Anything so, else? Um, um, so I'll ask council for a draft of the right of first refusal. <laughs> and thank you, Neil Donna, for your yeah, thank your you. input on this as well. Anything else on the RFP subject? So are, are we looking for when we meet on October? October? Uh, no, technically the last Tuesday is the 31st. No, well, no, we meet before then, right? Tenth and twenty fourth. So the tenth, tenth and thirty first. Have a ready to go first. Right. Second, second, and last. I know it says twenty fourth. Yeah. There are question marks. There are question marks after it. I see. Some so, people might want to be home with their kids for Halloween as well. I see. Thank you. Sure. They they yeah. they might be able to zoom into them. It's the twenty fourth. Sure. And we can paint it and call it the 24th if we want. If people want to be yeah. home with their kids on the 31st, does that mean we're having a meeting on the 31st or the 24th? Yeah. Question mark, question mark, question mark. I think that's why they're suggesting the 24th. Oh, Sorry, we switched subjects here. Yes. Thank Maybe you. we should wait for that to That's come. Keeping, all right. I, I jumped the gun there. So we'll try to have this ready about the town. Okay. Right. That'll be let's, awesome. Let's think of town. Okay. So that subject done. Okay. Uh, okay. Next subject: uh, new lease for skims, occupied current location. That lease is not ready yet. Has not been approved by skims board of oversight. So it is oh, not. Oh, so you the one that was included. It's not. It, that <laughs> has to be approved by the skims board of oversight before we. Oh, okay. It. Okay. It, like there's been discussions as there's, steps, but there's right. no formal. Oh, they have form, oh. right. It's so a the, formality. This is an order of operations thing. Skin food oh. has to approve it before oh, the right. selection. Right. Uh yeah. new business. Review, discuss, and vote whether to send a comment letter to the Department of Public hmm. Utilities regarding its proposed guidelines for municipal aggregation programs. Yeah. Brian, your before favorite subject. <laughs> <laughs> Before we even get into that, can I ask for clarification about the guidelines versus the bill? 
yep. versus H.3852 and the guidelines. It looks to me like the bill was in support of municipalities doing aggregation and then the guidelines were the state coming in going, don't we want to have some control over this? But I can start. You can yeah. fill me in. Correct. Or, right. or I was yeah. yeah. I was actually involved, <laughs> but uh, other people in our audience from um, were. So a, a, a quick background: municipal aggregation plans need to be approved by Department of Public Utilities. Yeah. Uh, the the timeline uh, that DPU. Um, the length of time it takes for DPU to approve these plans from when they're submitted ranges from it, it oftentimes it's in the range of years. Mm -hmm. Um, so there's a backlog of plans, and as you can tell from Whitley's experience, these obligation provided a lot of benefits, financial benefits to the participants. Mm -hmm. Um, and it also you know helped move um, our energy consumption greener mm -hmm. because of the options that were chosen. So those were the the two benefits. So it's becoming attractive to a lot of municipalities to do that, especially whenever source winter rates are 30 something cents a kilowatt hour. Um, so there's a lot of municipalities that have done it, and there's a lot that are trying to do it. I think one of these documents said there's about half who have done it um, and more are interested in doing it. Um, but the review process and the approval process takes. Um, oh my God. Um, My first select board meeting was about municipal aggregation. Yeah. That was 2009. Mm -hmm. And we didn't get it until, until just before the pandemic. Right. Yeah. So the way that I view it is there's really two competing approaches here. One is DPU's approach, mm -hmm. and then one is the legislation that's filed. Um, the DPU's approach seems to be we can get through this review and approval process faster by standardizing the municipal aggregation plans that are coming into us. So the the, the, the plans are more plain vanilla. Um, you know, they comply with these um, more strict guidelines or, or requirements and we and DPU we can get through them faster, get through the queue faster. Oh, because okay. Because essentially we they're complying with our guidelines, check, 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 and we approve them. The way that I read the legislation is um and and, and colonial is the, the broker who was working with the, the Franklin group of Franklin and sure group of towns that have done the municipal application. Um, you know, the criticism of that is that um municipalities should have flexibility in how they develop their aggregation plans. Mm -hmm. Um is so the legislation is saying, well, DPU, if you sort of um uh hold me back up for a second, if we will give the municipalities more local control and DPU will back off a little bit in terms of what they're wanting to review, mm -hmm. subject to you know consumer protections and things like that. Well, that'll that'll lessen your workload. Mm -hmm. Uh, because you'll be reviewing less of each of the types of plans. So we'll be less to review. So the queue should, you know, speed up. Um, and that provides municipality, it keeps municipalities with the flexibility to tailor plans that they feel is right for them. Um, so, you know, the DPU approach really restricts local control and creativity over the types of plans that they can put together. The legislation encourages or increases local control of those plans. Mm -hmm. That's how I read the two mm -hmm. competing um, things that are going on here, but um, I'm happy to be corrected or, or built and, upon. And this isn't like initial approvals. This is like every two or three years we're doing this and they have to approve every two or three years? I believe so. Okay. And how long was the the most recent agreement was for three years. For three years. So, yeah, it may not even be approved by the time it expires. Yeah, yeah. how do we? Oh, I'm not, the I'm not sure what the status of the new, uh, yeah. new aggregation is. Which I know we, we signed the agreements, but I'm right. not sure that it's been approved. Double check. 
approved by DPU. Yeah, yeah. yeah but if it can take them years to to get to it, as I said, the, the, the new ones, ones, a three-year agreement may be yeah, I suspect obsolete by the time. I suspect the existing ones would, would have a quicker approval. Right, because we, we have an existing. Yeah. So I, I'm not so worried that it won't get. So do we have to wait until they approve it to actually implement it? Like if we voted on something and said, yep, that's what we want to pay, that's what we're going to do, we have to wait until they. They, yeah, like when, it, yeah, yeah, when does the approval come that? in the process? The approval happens. They approved our aggregation plan, and then we went out to bid, I believe, right? Okay. Pretty sure. Okay. Okay, the plan approval was first, and then we Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Not, so that, that's yeah. not a concern. It, right, so yeah. it's not a concern of, of ours in relation to the upcoming. Okay. Um, I, I don't believe so. Okay. The information that we just entered into. Um, to me, it's... it's Everybody recognizes that there's a problem mm -hmm. with, the, with the review process taking too long. I guess there's just two different approaches to it. Um, mm -hmm. I always usually side with more local control and creativity yeah. and telling what works for your community, subject to some, you know, subject to consumer protection right. and things like that. Um, this looks like another cannabis control board. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 The energy power committee has not discussed this, but as a representative, I'm not speaking on my own, um, what part of this I was able to read, I think an additional concern would be is the current practice we engage in in order to get cheaper and greener electricity or no longer to be allowed so we oh, have to be right. uh, for example one of the advantages we have is compared to say your standard utility like ever source or um, national grid is that they are heavily restricted by dpu as to when they can go out to bid and and they and so typically they have to bid every six months and can divide what in two purchases that are going to determine what their next cost is. And so everybody knows when they're going to have to bid. But they are essentially forced to buy high. Mm -hmm. Right? And in addition, uh, they can't say oh look if we bought three months and six months there we should have a lower price so the negotiating room you have is greatly constricted if you constrict when you're allowed to go out to buy and one of the dp rules for constrict when you're allowed to go out to buy mm -hmm. the other is for the duration Right. Why do you have this yo-yo um, effect twice a year? Because you're required to go out and change your purchase anew, as if you were bidding a new contract every six months. Rather, that's what utilities look like. We're able to say, you know what? We want a year contract. We want a two-year contract. We want a three-year contract. And benefit a lot from that if, if in, in able to get again lower prices than if we were only committed to six months. Mm -hmm. Here, too, it's quite possible that the DPU, DPU would have within its power to say, No, you go out on the same schedule as the utilities and for the same duration of the utilities. And our purchasing power and flexibility, uh, our attractiveness in terms of what kind of prices we get. Would be severely constricted for the same reason that that is severely constricted for the utilities. The third might be that they might decide because the state thinks burning wood is doesn't emit carbon that we could not refuse to have biofuel in our you know 
earning wood in our portfolio, right? Or we could might not be able to require that all of our choices be better than that choice standard. So we might also lose the ability to have something that is more carbon friendly than standard. <laughs> it could destroy the entire reason yeah. in my opinion, personally, for having a display meeting. That's the okay. DPU. In the attempt okay. to simplify the work of the DPU. Okay. What we, is, we, I'm sorry. I'm yeah. sorry. We, we, we've got a draft email that. Yeah, yeah I, I may have misunderstood that, that, something here, but those. That Look word like that are really dangerous, which appears to uh, be opposed to the DPU's mm -hmm. proposed and right. uh, the DPU doesn't care about a couple polls. They don't say they don't care about. <laughs> well, we're, we're, I mean, any number of times we try to get DPU to act on our behalf. When we're in the right, they're always. Okay. It, it sounds like we're we're in agreement that we yeah. want to we want to support the draft I, email to the yeah, legislature. Yeah. Uh, for the rather of going on beating up on I think we, DPO. And okay, DPO, let's let the right. draft email do that for we, us. We beat up the DPO. I vote that we uh, send the comment letter to the Department of Public Utilities regarding its proposed yeah. guidelines. Yeah. yeah. I see one that goes to the department secretary. Uh, I see one that goes to the legislative delegation. Uh, and I see one that goes to the really, really long one. Uh, yeah, you want to take time review? Uh, here you go. Our like initial comments of our town. Uh, I, if I can amend the motion that, that, that we send emails. Along this line, for using this yeah. language to all appropriate parties. Second. <laughs> yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 And then Colony was asking, I assume that yeah. includes the motion includes. Yeah. Colony was asking if we'd sign on for the letter. It'll be a sign on to the letter of uh, legislation. Supporting legislation. Yes. 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 Sure. yes. Legislators are on yeah, the yeah. Right. And that's a and that's different from the email to legislative direction. Right. One, one of them is DPU's use that, the other one is legislative. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh next subject to review and sign loan documents for the remaining amount owed by the water department for the water merger project. Okay. What are the specifics on those? So this is a renewal of um, the loan for the water merger. Excuse me, water, mer water merger project um, for $100,000. We're paying down $85,000. Um, one of the issues, the real issue with reborrowing is the timing. Um, the retained earnings, October's not a good time for municipalities to have debt come due um, because it's a period of time when retained earnings and free cash are essentially are disappear in DLS. Um, so this is a six month borrowing. It'll allow the uh, water department to certify the retained earnings, go to a special town meeting, and um, these are all the same. Okay. Um, and obtain those funds to pay off the loan in full in six months. So that's the okay. that's the water commissioner's plan. Okay, looks like we're signing the papers, so we need motion. Yeah, we've already voted. We've already voted. I think on last previous meetings, right? Uh, we didn't have the winning. Uh, so the winning proposer is um, Greenfield Cooperative um, with interest rates 4.65% at 4.65% for six months. So yeah, I think a motion would be in order. I move that we accept the uh, uh, loan documents. We approve the loan documents or we approve the loan documents from Greenfield Cooperative Bank. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Just take a minute and finish signing these. Give them all back to you at once. Oh, okay.
Next item, discuss winter maintenance plan for town-owned buildings and sidewalks. Um, so it's almost October, so it's no fair game, you know, in October, so um, as we all found out from here. Yeah. Um, so last year, um, we used uh, JDR builders for clearing um, town buildings. Um, but essentially sidewalks, um, the town plus parking lots. Um, and then we, uh, John Hanna was um, clearing the sidewalks in the center of town. Um, but I talked with Keith and both of those options worked well last year. Um, so that's something that we would recommend doing again. Um, I talked with, with JDR about, uh, about pricing and I reached out to John about pricing out of the back end. Uh, but if that's okay, then we're going to pursue that avenue again. So we'll have the final pricing and agreements so again. Um, we have got out the bid in the okay. package for this, um, and we yeah. we don't get any responses yes. um, except for these individuals. It's convenient for John because he lives with these right there. The tractor's there, um, and then JDR Builders is in town. I can argue that that one works. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so we have a a bid or that rates from KR, but we haven't heard yet from John Mann. Correct. I don't think we can approve John to at least hear that he's going to do it again. No, and I'll come back next meeting with the with the, with the agreements that we had last year, and I'll follow up with John again. Okay, to make sure that he's interested. so. We'll put them on. Any final until the next meeting? Yeah. Uh, to discuss storage space uh, for the Whitley Historical Society of Town Offices. Um, See Neil's left. Yeah. So, so I I got an email earlier from Neil, and, and the challenges with the space back there for the Historical Society, and, and we're going to seek other options at this point uh, relate to um, temperature control, humidity control, and the, uh, I think the biggest problem is what sprinkler system in the building. Um, we faced this when we when we originally uh, put in the, the, the town office, the vault and the town offices. Um, we initially didn't plan. We thought the sprinkler systems over the top of the vault would be fine, but that doesn't comply with the building code. So any area, any sort of area that we would construct off would need to have either a sprinkler drop into it and water and things like that don't go well with this normal um, items and documents. Mm -hmm. Or in the case of the vault, we had we have a essentially a, a gas fire suppression mm -hmm. system, which is not cheap. Yeah. Um, so uh, that's so they're gonna see if there's other spaces available um, and then get back to us. Um, but that's that's I think that's the biggest impediment to using that space. Um, okay, so at this point it's a non-issue because they're not looking right. To there's nothing space pressing at this. Point. Okay. Yeah. Any other comment? Yeah. Okay. Comments on this? No. No. <clears throat> Move on. Okay, we have a vacancy on the board of assessors and a nomination of Jenny Morrison to fill the vacancy. Yeah, and I can just tell you that the assessors met earlier and they voted two to nothing to approve. Oh, um, Jenny. Well then, so I would happily nominate Jenny Morrison to the Board of Assessors until the next annual town election. No second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Select board leaders on updates. Julie. I have no updates. I have a question. There was a um item last time we met about the forests as climate solutions initiative this is following up on my uh, discussions with some local citizens about tree management etc did i was not able to attend the zoom meeting on september 12th did anybody i did not i did not okay yes. I think someone pointed out that it was during our yeah, meeting. Was, I didn't realize that. During our was meeting, it yes. during our yeah. meeting? It was. Oh, that's, that's why right. I didn't that's, attend. Yeah. But when I read it, somebody was like, well, oh, that's right now. That's right now. <laughs> yeah. I remember, I remember that, yeah. yes. So I will see if I can follow up with 
the folks who were interested, who, who I forwarded the information to. Thank you. That's it. Joy Hoffman. Um, uh, very little. I reported last time about um, the Board of Oversight for South County Senior Center and how awesome that has been going. Um, I did hear from the Senior Center Director, one of the things that we're, we have our eyes on is possible relocation in a building in Sunderland that was once um, owned by Oxford Press, I guess still owned by Oxford Press. Okay. Apparently it's going to go on the market soon. Oh. So we'll actually have a number for what it would take to, you know, to be a successful bidder on that building. Mm -hmm. um, and so that that when we have that information, that's the time to see is town of Sunderland interested in buying it? Um, what kind of a three town agreement would be required to, you know, make sure that that gets uh, that that you know to make sure we can nice. split the cost fairly <laughs> between the towns. Yeah. Um, the at our last meeting, I, I think one thing I forgot to mention is new members, new members, new members are growing, growing. The word is spreading about how great the activities are at our senior center and uh, the other statistic i don't know if i gave the last time um the budget from the three towns is about one hundred fifty thousand dollars for the senior center they raised one hundred and fifty two thousand in grants this year um so they kind of uh i don't know they, they managed to kind of they doubled their budget through grants and those grants are going towards classes and activities um, and outreach and all kinds of really good programs. So I don't have enough nice things to say about them. If we had that new space, they would fill it with activities that everybody would want to be there. So I'm just just putting that out in advance that this could be coming down the road. Has there been an if? And there are a lot of ifs here. Yeah, there is so many ifs, yeah. If the business, that building comes on the market and if it is seen as a viable option, yeah. would the senior center consider going to the towns which were now closer than they would have been? Oh, um, Montague and Leverett. Maybe which, which, are, oh, which would suddenly be much closer than they would have been. Yeah, uh, absolutely, year. absolutely. I think. Um, Actually, right now Conway is kind of feel, kind of putting out some feelers to see if they might yeah. they might want to move, um, moving to some of the we'll move further away from right. Conway. But it's it's still only five minutes away yeah. from where we're doing things now. It, right. it really isn't very far. Um, to so compared to what we're doing now, it's. it's and I was just looking at a map, right. and you know, yeah, yeah, in particular is. Right there, and I, I think no, no one's certainly expressing yeah. any opposition. We've talked about expanding to other towns. Okay, um, that that are not with us at the moment. Okay, yeah, cool. Any other reason? I, I had a meeting this morning with the school superintendent, and we may we may be setting up a meeting with officials in Waverly soon, just to clarify our capital. Um, with the capital committee and how we go about liaison, uh, doing liaison with the school to determine what projects yeah. should be recommended for funding. Because apparently the way we do it is not the same way the other towns in the school district do it. And I'm so surprised. Uh, so he that, that I suggested to him we you know set up a meeting here and figure out what we're doing, why, and is there some better way to to do communications. That meeting has not yet been set up, so if it happens, I'll let you know. Okay. Uh, town administrator updates. Um, so the first time I was about cannabis HCAs. We talked in uh, in prior meetings about likely changes that have to happen. Um, they actually had a conversation. Uh, the uh, attorney for for Verde. TBA Happy Feelings uh, reached out and uh, we talked for a while. They were trying to get a sense of what the town was thinking uh, in terms of the draft regulations. And with their business open now, they were trying to get a sense of what the what the town was thinking in terms of impact fees and that type of thing. And 
I told uh, I told him that you know we were we reviewed the regulations and we were we were waiting to see what essentially what comes out of those regulations um, and we were going to go from there. So um, it was a, a, a perfectly cordial conversation. Um, so that's but they they are interested in. in you know, knowing what the town is thinking. Mm -hmm. um, I also reached out to um, uh, Green Jeans, Green Jeans, uh, Green Jeans Farms. That's the one on one plan road cultivation. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I actually let them know that their host community agreement had expired mm -hmm. um, and that it would need to be renewed if they're hoping to get, or get a final license. Um, mm -hmm. And they were going to reach out to their attorney to get back to me, but uh, I think what's holding that up is the is the pending draft regulations, which would mm -hmm. sort of impact the positions that various parties take in terms of negotiating HCAs. So um, we're really just in a waiting pattern to mm -hmm. for the regula draft regulations to be finalized in whatever form. And then I think there's some work to do, but there's definitely establishments that are paying attention to that. So. Um, okay, that's that. Um, we did find out this uh, this past week, but we do have some past due invoices that are due um, to um, Chloe Dickinson for past you know physicals and tests that have that that have been done for for town employees. Um, it was a little bit puzzling to us why we hadn't seen the invoices. Uh, they were getting sent to the old PO box that the town got rid of in twenty sixteen. Oh, um, eight year old address. Okay. And they were, I don't know what happened to the, I assume the invoices were mailed there and then I don't know return what happened. Sender. Either return sender or just never mm -hmm. delivered. I don't know what happens when mail sometimes goes missing. I imagine that, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, but it also begs the question why would they kept coming back over. Right. It is also for some reason they also have the town on two separate accounts. It's been fixed, but it anyways, um, those exist. So that's another item that I'm gonna add to the special comedy warrant. Okay. Um personnel policies. Those are the policies that I could never get. Um I did, we did uh, <coughs> set a personnel uh, committee meeting for um in October. Uh, in, in early October. Um, yeah. I was promised those. By the end of this week, like I was last week, um, so I'm getting kind of frustrated, but I'm trying to be patient and hope that we get a good product. Um, what, was there a change in the membership of the personnel committee? And no, 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 the, it's not this, this work that we had a consultant to do. No, I, no, I know, but yes, there. In is, addition, uh, I believe oh, Tom Mahar, Tom Mahar is one of and then Brandon Dorothy has okay, Brandon for the finance figure of the center. Okay, yeah. Um, town Hall Windows, I have been playing phone tag with um, Representative from True Light, uh, who is the, the company, the manufacturer who tested those windows. So I was hoping to have an update, but we'll play phone tag again this week. Um, FY25 budget, this is just something that I just want to sort of keep in the front of our minds. It's something we want to start a little bit earlier. Um, yeah. And uh, I met with the Finance Committee Chair to have some discussions. Um, Related to the budget process and also compensation. Um, so that's the conversation I want to start with with the personnel committee um, mm -hmm. as to the best way to try to, try to figure that out. Um, I'm not sure we're going to solve uh, philosophical differences about certain aspects of compensation, but um, I don't know. Maybe we can maybe it can be less uh, less rushed and less controversial. Yeah, um, but it's just a larger discussion. And then there's there's some interest, uh, at least from, from town employees, in in exploring a new town website, um, or at least a new design. Um, yeah, the, the, that was new when I started yeah. in 2016, so it's about seven years old. <clears throat> uh, it's very basic; doesn't have a lot of connectivity with other platforms or anything. So um, oh. there's some interest in exploring that and seeing what those costs. Are. So the board's okay with that. Do we want yeah. to look, set up some sort of ad hoc committee to to write her on that? Find some people to look at other town websites, 
got to figure out what we want. Or is that something that employees want to already do? Um, uh, I know very little about websites. Um, if, I, I think if you set up a formal committee, it's going to get kind of rigid with open meeting lots. So I think That's if people who want to volunteer to have an informal, like you said, ad hoc, so yeah. an informal committee, I would say reach out. Mm -hmm. Maybe reach out to me. Is that if that's all right? Okay, and we can. All right, all okay. you web designers out there right. watching any, this, any people who are good with web design? That's what I do for a living, so I'll reach okay. out to you. <laughs> yeah. I'll look forward to hearing. Although that. I don't do town websites, I did right. take a look at there. First, yeah. I have for everything. I've been I, 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 I having a couple of people do some reading, you know, looking yeah. around, seeing what other towns yeah. do, and what we might do to can't hurt to look, right? Improve ours. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, anything else? Um, uh, Castaways is uh, mm -hmm. reopening yeah, yeah. October fourth. Well, not October fourth. Um, so okay. that's it. I've got no other items not anticipated. Next meeting October tenth, six o'clock. Okay. Yeah. Can we uh, no get the question marks off the twenty fourth? There was a an event that I I signed up to try to go to. I doubt I'm going to get into it for the twenty fourth. It's going to be one of those things where they, you know, more people will want to go than to go, and they're going to somehow call the herd. And I think I will be called. So yeah. if it's the twenty fourth, I'm actually okay with that. But initially, I was like, oh no, I want to go to the thing. Um, but I, I'd be okay I, if it. I mean, somebody probably wants to be home with their kids. Is I'm guessing. Well, I think my kids want me to be home with them. Right. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and and not on Zoom with us. Right. right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so it doesn't have to be the twenty fourth, but it could be. Yeah, yeah. I, I, uh, um, I, I'm I'm good for the twenty fourth. Yeah, twenty fourth is fine to, to keep it. Uh, the Tuesday after that is election day, and you know it's not much on the ballot. Well, I yeah yeah yeah. yeah. I think yeah. that's let's just do the go go for the twenty fourth. Suggest okay. just remove those question right. marks. Okay, thank you. All right. Mm -hmm. Do I have a motion to adjourn? I move that we adjourn this meeting. Second. Discussion? None. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.